hello everyone, my name is Laura, this is my channel Laura's Little Library, and welcome to today's video, which are my goals for 2023. So this is, like I said, my goals for 2023 video and just kind of updates to the channel and kind of what I am thinking for 2023. And these are going to be updates for my YouTube channel, Instagram, like my other bookish social medias, and a little bit of like a life update, just kind of giving you an overview of what my 2023 is going to look like and just kind of getting it all put together. Let's start off with some of the things that are going to change and some of the goals I have for this channel. I hope to continue posting two videos a week uh, all year long like I did this past year. I think it worked out really well. I felt like I was able to get the content out that I wanted to, but I also wasn't pressed for coming up with more content than what I was inspired to do. So I'm going to continue doing that. However, some of the content that I am going to create is going to be a little different than what I did this past year. So this past year in 2022, I did a TBR for every month. This was an experiment because I knew that I was a mood reader, but I was wondering how my reading would react to having a set TBR. I knew that if I didn't have any books that I wanted to read, it was more likely that I was going to have longer pauses in between picking up books. So I wanted to make sure that there were books that I wanted to read, but I'm also a mood reader. And so forcing myself to read a book that I don't want to is going to put me in a slump. What I've learned from this is that I don't want monthly TBRs per se, because it is too demanding in a way that does not work with my reading style. However, like I said, having books that I knew I wanted to read somewhat soon was kind of nice because then I would always have a book to pick up afterwards, but you know, I could go off on tangents about how I would read one book of one genre and then just want to read like three more, but my TBR didn't include those. So then I felt like I had to kind of force myself to switch. So what I'm going to do this year is instead of doing monthly TBRs, I'm just going to do seasonal TBRs. So I also did seasonal TBRs at the same time I did these monthly TBRs, which was really difficult, but kind of what I was doing is seasonal TBRs consisted of the very seasonally aesthetic books that I wanted to read, and then the monthly TBRs didn't always include those, which kind of made it hard to do the seasonal TBRs, and then I wasn't reading the aesthetic books that I wanted to. But it did open me up for reading other like non-season specific books, so this year I'm just going to do seasonal TBRs. I'm going to do 10 or less books that I want to read in a season. That way I always have a book to pick up when I finish, but if I'm not in the mood, I'm not super pressed, like, well, I only have a month to read these books, so I need to, like, move forward with it. I can actually just be like, you know what, I feel like picking up something like this instead, and I'm just less pressured to do so. So it allows me to be a mood reader, but still be, like, motivated and continuing to read. I also feel like I should say my goal for this past year was to read 100 books and I surpassed that ginormously. As of filming right now, I had read like 172 books, I think. So I like really went past my goal. For this coming year, my goal is still going to be read 100 books because I never wanted to ever have a goal that was more than 100 books because you never know what the year brings. And if I don't meet the goal, that is okay. But I also knew that this year I put off reading a lot of the chunkier fantasies that I wanted to read. Not necessarily to complete the goal, because I completed the goal like halfway through the year. But I was just, yeah, I was afraid of the amount of books I was consuming versus amount of reading I was doing. Um, so I'm going to keep my goal at 100 books. And that's just going to continue to be my goal every year moving forward um be and then because of that i am being more intentional with the books that i do want to read and just actually prioritizing what i want to read not what i think i should read so 
For more information about that, see my video of 23 books that I want to read in 2023 because I talk about it quite a bit there. Uh, the next thing are unhauls. So I have done a few unhaul videos this past year and it's been a good thing. So I think that I'm going to be a little more selective because I know that there are books on my shelves that I am never going to read or have read and just don't care for but I won't unhaul it because I feel like I should have this book on my shelves. For example, this one right here. This is Where the Sidewalk Ends by Shel Silverstein. It is the only poetry book I have. I feel like I should have it because it's a poetry book and I should probably have at least one poetry book on my shelves, but that's bull crap. I, if I'm not going to read it, which I'm not, and I have no interest of it actually being on my shelves, I should really get rid of it. So I will continue to do unhauls and I want to actually get rid of books and not worry about like how I'll be perceived for having or not having them on my shelves. Also we will be moving this year, so there's also that. It'll be good to do an unhaul before we move. And speaking of hauls and unhauls, if you don't know, I operate with a book budget and my book budget will continue to be $30 this coming year, so that won't change. I will still be buying $30 worth of books every month. Next thing in terms of YouTube content are, I'm going to talk about bullet journals. Um, so I, I have a bullet journal. I, I've been using bullet journals um, and I've been loving it. I love using my bullet journal. It's just such a great way to organize my reading, my reviews, my thoughts, my bookish life, everything like that. However, making the bullet journal videos have been quite a struggle for me. I am not a fine art kind of person. I do not draw well and because of that I don't want to do like these intensive themes and I, I've just kind of been thinking you know I just don't need to theme each month and then because of that I feel like the videos would get very boring and repetitive because all I'm doing are drawing the same charts every month so I'm going to stop doing bullet journals videos videos I will continue to do a bullet journal I just won't film the setting up for the month just because I'm not always going to make them aesthetic and it's just not an expectation I want to place on myself. It's been very stressful and they always go up late. Those videos always go up at least one to two weeks into the month and because of that a lot of times what happens is that it'll be like the last day of the month and it'll be like oh I need to film this video because I need to set up my bullet journal and I'll do all the basic planning for it but then because of how uncomfortable I feel with doing the aesthetic like themes and the artwork of it I always put it off and then I can't allow myself to have a ready bullet journal for the month and everything falls behind and it's a mess so I won't be filming those videos anymore if I'm inspired to do a themed spread for a month good for me but I probably, I, I just won't film it. So those videos are going to stop. I'm sorry if you enjoyed them. But also I feel like they were the most struggle bus videos that I had. Like they're always the ones with corrupted footage or issues. So it's just going to be a huge weight and stress off of my shoulders to no longer do bullet journal videos. Those are the updates for my YouTube channel. I am going to do the continuathon again this April and I'm gonna do my spooky season spectacular again next year things like that Probably not gonna change and probably not gonna add on anything unless I do it with someone else So I don't really have plans other than those then Instagram so for Instagram. I have been doing a lot of like book reviews like doing a post of the book and then having the review in the description and I'm going to continue doing that but I'm also going to try and diversify my content a little bit more in terms of like doing like my seasonal TBRs or doing uh, like a wrap up more often and just smaller stacks and like doing the books that I recently purchased on Instagram and um, 
doing fun stacks and challenges and just kind of doing more than just one book reviews. Yeah, I just want to kind of break up my feet a little bit and I want to stretch my creativity a little more. And I am probably going to end up changing my theme again. We'll see. Um, just to kind of make the photos more interesting. So Instagram is going to go through some changes and it's going to be good. So you should totally follow me there if you don't already. My Instagram is linked down below so you can just click on it there and, and then so now I'm gonna get into more of the general updates goals and talking about what life will look like in 2023 I currently live in Minnesota my partner Brennan is a student and he will actually be graduating this spring I started college but I decided to go on a two-year sabbatical and work full-time because my program that I was studying was dropped and I didn't get to finish it even though they told me I was going to so that was a huge bummer and so I didn't want to be paying out-of-state tuition for a program that was not what I chose the school for um, but I will actually be going back to school next year so fall 2023 I will be going back to school and I will be finishing my bachelor's degree so I'm very excited about that it's gonna be such an adjustment going back into classes and really just having homework because like I said I've been working full-time and so I'm used to not being home for eight hours a day it's just the homework the nice thing about the job that I currently have is that I don't work from home at all because I, I work in a bakery <laughs> versus like being a student I'm going to have homework again so however the school that I'm going to go to is in Michigan which is where I am initially from so we will be moving back to Michigan this summer I am so excited to move back to Michigan. It's where my family is, it's where Brennan's family is, it's the area we're familiar with. Now there's one other big, well two other big things that I will mention about next year. First one being in the summer of 2023, so we're gonna pack up everything in Minnesota, move to Michigan, and then almost immediately go on a two-month vacation in Europe. I know exciting right we are going to fly to greece and spend two months various countries around europe we're gonna hop on the train and we're gonna stop in like this country and then we'll spend a week in that country and we're actually gonna end our trip in morocco because we have a friend who moves to morocco so we will be spending two months traveling abroad i'm gonna do my best to pre-film as much as possible during that time and i will be vlogging my experience and I'm still gonna read on vacation I mean obviously but that is going to be another thing that is happening this year that will affect my booktube life that's gonna be a lot right moving from one state to another traveling for two months back to school and then I have one more update and this is this is like a less dramatic time-consuming update when we move to Michigan we will begin the process of looking for a house we finally feel we are in a stable place to be able to do so I'm gonna continue working while I'm in school and he is going to be working while he's getting his master's degree and so we are going to buy a house we're gonna come back from Europe and almost immediately start house hunting because we have been living in an apartment with roommates and everything which has been great but I want a book room and we want our own space and we want to have enough space so there will also be that process until we buy a house when we move to Michigan but don't have a house yet because our goal is to have a house by Halloween of 2024 so we'll have just over a year to try and buy a house and this is gonna be a starter home you know one we're gonna live in for a few years but then we'll probably sell and move on but until then we're actually gonna be living with my parents so we my parents have room for us it's not an issue but they don't I'm not gonna be able to bring all of my books sadly we don't have space in my parents house for my library so a lot of these books and just a lot of our stuff in general 
is going to have to go into storage. We're going to rent a storage unit and it will be temperature controlled. We are taking care of this. So I'm going to be have I'm going to have to put a lot of these books into storage and just not have access to them whenever I want, which is really sad and I am so afraid, uh, which is going to make filming very interesting because I might make like monthly visits to the storage unit to trade out books. But yeah, that's going to be a thing and it's going to be so sad and depressing and I'm going to continue to buy books, obviously. But that does mean though, starting at the beginning of 2023, I'm going to really need to focus on my physical TBR. I'm really going to need to focus on the books that I have on my shelves that I haven't read um, because I don't know how many books I'm going to be able to keep with me at my parents' house. And I really want to focus on the books that I haven't read yet, but even still. Those are all the major life updates. Moving states. Two month vacation. Starting school. Books going into storage until we can buy a house. That also means I'm probably going to be utilizing the library quite a bit. And my parents live two blocks from a library, so it's not going to be a problem. Not going to be an issue. Next thing I'm going to talk about though is I'm making a lot of plans for my shelves. So I have a white shelf down here that you can't really see. And we just bought that shelf from Ikea. So we are gonna take that back with us. However, these two shelves right here, uh, we got either from for free from a friend, this one, or we got for very cheap off of Facebook Marketplace, this one. And I don't like them. <laughs> I'm going to sell them. They work just fine. The thing is is that I actually don't like this light brown color. I never have. So I will be selling these shelves when we move. And then when we do get a house, I will buy more white shelves. Because I think I've decided that, because I want to figure out my library aesthetic. And I think white shelves are going to be the best fit for me personally. I think they look best with the seasonal decorations that I like to do. They're the most versatile and they really help make my books pop. So I won't be able to buy the shelves next year, but I will be preparing for it. And I know kind of what I want my shelves to look like. So again, I, I get very invested in seasonal aesthetics. And so I will be having a lot of seasonal decorations on my shelves, but I think the overall kind of vibe that my shelves will go for um, is going to be very travel based um, because obviously I love to travel. And so like I'm picturing how I want to plan out my book room or my library in our future house. And I'm just getting plans for that because even though we're probably not going to be able to buy a house until 2024, it's still nice to dream. In terms of my reading goals, like I said, my reading goal is still 100 books. It always and forever will be every year is to read 100 books. But I'm going to focus this year on reading whatever I want, even if I'm afraid it's going to take me a long time to do so. Because this year I've done a lot of sacrificing of, I'm not going to read this chunky fantasy because I could read these three contemporary that I'm interested in in the same amount of time. Which is fine because I was interested in those contemporary books, but I just don't enjoy them as much as I think I would have enjoyed the fantasy. So I am going to be re-assessing uh, my priorities about my favorite genres and what I'm going to read. So fantasy will always take the top and I'm going to do better about prioritizing those. And I want to read more historical fiction as well. And I'm still going to continue to read contemporary. And I'm still going to continue to read thriller. Because I've been reading quite a bit of thriller this year. And I've been enjoying it. I'm just going to make sure that I'm reading what I enjoy in the moment. And not what I should be reading. It's going to be quite the year next year. So there's I'm making all these plans. All these goals. All these assumptions. But you're just never really going to know until you live it. Stay tuned if you like this video. Give it a thumbs up. Tell me some of the goals that you have for 2023. Are you hoping to read more of a certain genre or a certain author? Or do you want to collect more books, less books? Like what, what are you thinking for 2023? Subscribe, hit the bell to be notified. Like I said, I have Booker's social media link down below. I hope it was alright that this was a, a very chill video. 
Um, but yeah, until I see you all in the next one, I wish you happy reading.